Before I start this video, I wanted to reintroduce myself. My name is Brett Turnage. I used to be a 3D printing designer who developed RC cars for the 3D printing market um, almost about 10 years ago. And that was my life until I went off to the real world of cars where I worked for Hot Rod Magazine and Motor Trend and Ford Motor Company as a writer and photographer. So that's a little bit about me. And now let's get into how you get your K2 Plus working for 2PU. The problem with the stock extruder with printing TPU is that the static spring is too strong. Whereas older printers used to have a spring that had a uh, thumb screw so you could modulate and tighten and loosen up your, uh, your extruder tension on the filament. This one only has one spring and it's pretty much set and forget. That's great if you're using hard materials, but for softer materials like TPU that need less pressure, not more, it's really hard to do. And so one of the main things to do is to get rid of the super strong static spring. And so we replace that unit with a much weaker spring, which is about half the strength. And this particular string, a spring, I'll leave the link to, uh, to it in the uh, description, is what we want to replace it with. But what we're going to do is we're going to 3D print out a spring perch. If you're a car guy, you know what that is. And this little spring perch is going to sit inside of this, of this new spring and we'll be able to use the already existing M3 and we'll be able to use a thumb screw to tighten it and loosen it. This particular thread actually makes it seem that Creality probably had a thumb screw in mind when they were designing the printer but then decided to uh, just go with a static spring. So here's what we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you the symbol. Okay, so here's the uh, spring perch and the new spring. And all we're gonna do is slip that inside so it's now inside the extruder. So I'll jump ahead. So once you have it installed, you're gonna wanna take a second spring of the same size and cut it to size. Cut a little piece off. Once you have, once you have this little spring installed, you're gonna to wanna to put this on your M3 thumb screw. And it's gonna be on the outside and pretty much keep tension onto the screw so that as the machine is doing its fast movements, it's not gonna start backing up. So we'll just do this right now. And just go ahead. And install it. And this little screw will keep tension and stop it from backing up while it's doing fast movements. Once you're soaked together, your extruder is now set. You can variably change the tension on the filament and you're good to go ahead and print. Here's the modified extruder now installed back in the K2 Plus. You could either decide to use the stock extruder cover. In that case, you're gonna to wanna to have to dremel out a piece or cut a piece off of it so that you can kind of fit it over. Just mark it up, you know, align it, mark it with your machine just to make sure you're cutting the right place. Or you can 3D print some of the really cool custom made extruder covers that people have. Be careful when tightening the screws. Sometimes if you tighten the lower screw too tight, you might find that this lever isn't as, uh, as, as loose and you wanna have that be as free as possible. So just make sure that you don't over tighten the bottom, make sure it's, it's equal. Um, and make sure that your lever is, 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 is loose. If it's not, back up this screw a little bit and then tighten this one down and make sure you're good. So we wanna make sure this lever is as free as possible. Right, you're gonna wanna feed in your TPU by hand just to make sure that it goes in the first time and then go ahead and have the machine extrude it. Okay, once we have our filament inserted into the extruder, we're gonna to wanna to go back to the control panel on the machine. Select the filament and tell it to extrude. Okay, the machine's heated up. We're gonna watch this. We're gonna watch this wheel. Now, Will's gonna show us if we're extruding the TPU correctly. 
and you're gonna wanna adjust your knob to either tighten or loosen up the tension on the extruder wheels until you get a good, nice stream of filament extruding out. So right now we're purging what was left out of there from the PLA and it's my filament, the TPU is Sierra Tech. 95A and it should be black so we'll start seeing it turn black as it's popping out the uh, the TPU. Okay so it's turning black starting to see some TPU start coming out. And if it wasn't extruding correctly of course just adjust your thumb screw knob and you're good. I like to put a mark on the side of my thumb screw, which allows me to tell if it's moved in case, just in case, good safety measure. And right there, we've got TPU extruding. So that is a, this is a great way to modify your K2 Plus if you want to plant TPU. Okay, so there's TPU extruding. And just to do a test, I, after calibrating, I 3D printed a the Well Wellberry shoes, which is a 51 hour test. Um, worked perfectly. Not that comfy of shoes, um, but uh, the main thing is is that you can go ahead and calibrate this all the way up with your max velocity or max volumetric uh, of, of pressure. I was able to get it up to uh, seven uh, millimeters cubed per second, and so uh, you know pretty good uh anything more than that it kind of seemed a little weird but printing uh the sierra tech uh filament at 225 and uh yeah did great so hope this helps anybody having trouble printing tpu on the k2 plus and by the way uh you can always finish it up just go ahead and put that nice cover on and your machine looks just like it's supposed to so take care bye